Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So this time I want to give you guys some help for 2024. Uh, for those of you that are interested in law enforcement and getting up to the interview, uh, for some background, I was in law enforcement for a period of almost five years. So I do have a good understanding of what it takes to be a police officer. And so I want to get you guys ready for your interviewing uh, for 2024 or beyond. So they're always going to ask you, the first question usually is always, always, why do you want to become a police officer? And you don't want to sit there looking dumbfounded. <laughs> you want to have an answer for this question. Now, what I always recommend is you got to reach back because most people who become cops have always wanted to become cops. I'm betting it's probably most of your stories, right? It was for me. So the answer I've always had a deep sense of commitment to public service, serving the public. I've always wanted to become a police officer because their passions align with my passions. I believe in serving my community and doing what's best for my community. I also want to contribute to maintaining law and order in my community that I serve and with the people that I serve. So that's your answer. You guys can make it any way you want to, but it has to be honestly from a point of view where you want to serve the community. Because, you guys, if you don't want to serve the community, do not become a police officer. That's what it's all about. Good or bad, that's what you do, okay? How do you handle stress and pressure? How do you handle stress and pressure? I have no problem with stress and pressure. I understand it's part of my job as a law enforcement officer. I have learned to do a couple things though, to help me to get through it. I am very efficient at time management. I prioritize my task, and I always maintain a sense of calm and a composed demeanor. I understand that people are looking at me to be the one to maintain the calm, composed, safe demeanor. Therefore, I make sure that I reflect that, which I think is crucial for a law enforcement officer. So you're saying this answer, you're saying that you've been prepared or you are prepared already for being under pressure. You already have an idea what it's like to be under pressure. And so it won't come as a big deal for you. In fact, when they do ask this question, and they will, I want your face and your body to show that, okay, no problem. And you're going to answer this question easily and without any kind of fear or being nervous, okay? Because that's what you want to reflect is to be calm even when you answer this question at the interview, okay? So describe a situation where you had to use effective communication skills. So a lot of you guys are going for this interview with no law enforcement background whatsoever. So you're thinking, oh my gosh, what should I do? You don't have to have that. If you can even use your skill set used at a, at a hamburger joint, right? If you were to say McDonald's, you know today through YouTube and social media, you have a lot of people who get upset over missing a, a French fry in their, in their box, right? And so, <laughs> but you want to do the basics. And here's the basics, what I mean. Here's the key, guys. It doesn't really matter where you are. It doesn't matter what job you have. Here's the key. So, describe a situation where you had to use effective communication skills. Well, I worked at McDonald's for two and a half years. There was a situation one time where the customer came to me. He was mad because we're missing a burger. So, what I did, I listened to him. He was very upset at first. He was very, very mad because we didn't put his burger in the bag. And so, after about five minutes, he understood. I was listening to him. I was repeating what he said in a calm demeanor. My hands were at my side, so he understood I was not posing a threat to him whatsoever. After about five minutes, he understood that I'm just here to listen and to help him. When he was done, or when I thought he was done, I asked him at that time, can I please tell him my side? And I did. And he listened. I put the burger in his bag, and he was happy, and he left. So the first thing for law enforcement, you guys, is you have to be able to listen, right? you got to be good listeners. Not just hearing people, but also listening. So... You don't have to have a law enforcement background for that question, but you have to have a background in good listening. Okay, there we go. So number four is going to be a tough one for you guys, so get ready for it. What do you believe are the most significant issues facing law enforcement today? It's a good question, right? It's, 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 it's a real thinker. So... Because of the preponderance of social media, things on video nowadays, I think, and I want you to use this in your answer, 
The biggest thing facing, the biggest significant issue facing law enforcement today is trust for the community and effective use of our technology. Trust is something that we see on YouTube every day. Sometimes it looks good for us and sometimes it doesn't look so good for us. But I surely believe that trust is the biggest issue facing law enforcement today. And that's your answer, you guys. You don't want to go too far into this. You don't want to do some, you know, 80-page thesis on that. You just tell this interview panel what you believe is the biggest problem facing law enforcement. And it really is trust anyway. So that's your answer. How do you handle ethical dilemmas? How do you handle ethical dilemmas? This is a no-go. So what do I mean by that? Your answer has to have it so that you are not going to be flexible with any kind of ethical dilemma, right? You're not going to bend for this. You cannot bend for this. So here's your answer, a good sample answer for you. At all times, I maintain an ethical balance, meaning I never bend on my ethics. I make sure this is a non-negotiable situation for me. I will never bend on my ethics because not only does it go against my own personal ethics, it reflects poorly upon the department and upon the community that I serve. That's it, you guys. It's a simple answer. You will not bend your ethics, okay? And be firm in that answer. Don't look around. Don't be nervous. Say that answer and say it straight, okay? There we go. How would you handle a situation where a member of the public is uncooperative or hostile. How do you handle a situation where a member of the public is uncooperative or hostile? First and foremost, you wanna say in your answer, I will remain calm and professional at all times. That is paramount to my position as a law enforcement officer. I will assess the situation, attempt to understand the source of their frustration, and use effective communication to de-escalate tensions, okay? You guys, use that word in the interview, de-escalate tensions. The reason why is because we see a lot of times on social media what's happening with law enforcement, sometimes they're escalating, correct? Because they're human, right? They're human just like you, just like me. So in the interview process, you want to use that D word, I will make sure I try to de-escalate the tension. And then if necessary, I will call for backup or include a supervisor. So you're saying right there, you're listening, you're looking around, you're being definitely situationally aware, right? You're aware of the situation. And immediately you're going to start to try and de-escalate and not ramp up the situation. For one, you're assumed to be there by yourself, so you don't have any backup, right? So you want to use your listening skills, your situational awareness, and also what's most important to de escalate the situation okay there we go describe your experience working in a diverse environment describe your experience working in a diverse environment you guys i'm not going to give you the answer for this if you live in america you should be in a diverse environment already just tell them what your experience is there that's all you gotta do it's not that hard okay next one how do you build trust within a community how do you build trust within a community? This is kind of, it's not really a trick question, but it's a question where you really got to think about how is policing done these days, right? You're usually, what, in a car, right? You're not walking anymore, right? So here's your answer. Building trust involves my active engagement with the community, being transparent and also being present in the community, maybe doing volunteer activities, volunteering weekends with the boys club, things of that nature to really become part of the fabric of the community in which I serve. That's all you got to say, you guys. You want to remove yourself from that vehicle and put yourself into the community. That is what builds trust. You cannot build trust rolling around in your car all day long. It doesn't work that way. But yes, we know it's much more efficient, cover more ground for sure, right? But in the interview process, they're asking you the question, how do you build trust within a community? You have to see yourself as being come becoming involved or becoming absorbed into that community, okay? Describe a time when you had to make a split-second decision. 
Describe a time where you had to make a split second decision. Now, again, you're probably thinking, well, gee, you know, I'm not a police officer yet. I'm here inter interviewing for a police officer, right? You, you don't have to be a cop to have had made split second decisions. You have to go back into your past a little bit and think about some real world application when, when you did that. You know, for me, I'm, I'm a vet. I've had many jobs before where I've had to make split second decisions. You can even say things like, you know, you're driving your car, the light turned green, but then a car ran, ran, the, red, ran the red on their side, you hit the brakes really fast. Those are all examples of split second decisions. You don't have to have some, you know, you know you're, you're doing some 100 miles in your car, chasing somebody, whatever. No, no, no. Just make it something that is believable and truthful. So that means really draw something from your past that you could talk about with ease, okay? That was a split second decision. It's not that tough, okay? What steps would you take to ensure a crime scene is properly secured and processed? Hmm? So again, what steps would you take to ensure a crime scene is properly secured and processed? Okay, again, this question is, isn't about you being a cop. It's about you having read before you started down the police officer role or the law enforcement career path, right? This question is really asking you, have you read about this job, right? So here's your answer for this, okay? Because all crime scenes require a couple things, okay? So you would say, hmm, I would establish a perimeter around the crime scene. I would definitely restrict access and document the scene thoroughly. Also, I would coordinate with forensics to ensure the preservation of all evidence and to make sure that my supervisor knows where I'm at at all times on the scene. That's it, you guys. Your job is to preserve that evidence at the crime scene. The way you do it, you set up that perimeter. You do not need to be a police officer to understand how basic this really is. And plus, that answer shows them, it shows them that you have been doing your homework, okay? That's how you do it. It's, it's not that tough, okay? Now, let's see here. What you want to do then is think about how do you balance the need for public safety with respect for individual rights? <laughs> That's a good question, right? <laughs> it's a good question. So your answer is, first of all, you want to say they're both important, right? So you would say the balancing the public safety needs with individual rights is what? It's fundamental. You want to say a word like that. Use fundamental. You're saying to them already, they're both important, right? So then you would go on. I would prioritize respectful and lawful interactions, ensuring that the rights of individuals are protected while maintaining the safety and security of the community. So you are saying, what you're saying there is that you are making this balancing act, right? You understand there's... There is, a, there is a balancing act there, you know? And that's what you got to do. I mean, that's just, you're giving both sides importance. And that's your answer, okay? That's how you do it. What motivated you to pursue a career in law enforcement? Now, this almost sounds like the first question. So, again, you always want to reach back into your past as far as your passion for being a police officer. I've always had a passion for law enforcement. I've always wanted to be in law enforcement. Something like that where they would say, okay, Obviously, this person wants to be a law enforcement officer, okay? Last one is here. What do you believe are the most important qualities for a police officer to possess? So again, what do you believe are the most important qualities for a police officer to possess? Here we go. This is because also <laughs> he got more exposure more transparency via social media, right? So the first answer I want you to say is integrity. A police officer must possess integrity and then be resilient or flexible and also have effective communication. Someone who was always seeking to de-escalate a situation. Also, one who upholds the law with fairness and being able to be flexible in various situations with the eye always towards building trust with the community. That's your answer, you guys, okay? Those are things you want to ask 
Sorry. Those are answers to these questions that are going to come at you, and they will come at you. If you have any questions at all, any things you're not sure about on this video for you to answer, just let me know. Will every one of these questions be on your interview panel? No. But if you can answer these questions, you'll be okay doing your interview panel. Just be yourself, be passionate, and be honest. And remember, you are there for the community. The community isn't for you. Now, they're going to ask you, finally, do you have any questions for us? And yes, you do. The first question you want to do is ask anybody on that panel, pick out one person, what motivates you to come to this precinct? What is it about this place that makes you excited? It's a fair question. It's also a very intelligent question. Intelligent interviewees always ask that question because at that point there, the panel understands that you are also interviewing them with that question, okay? Number two, you would say, who is one of your best officers out there? Who are one of your best officers out there? And they might tell you the name, you say, because I want to make sure I try to emulate them as much as I can. You're telling them from the beginning that you want to learn the role and the job and the duties of the job from their best officer. You're telling them right from the start, I want to be the best, so thank you for telling me who is the best, right? After that, if you can shake hands, shake all their hands as you go to the parking lot. Do not get into your car. Do not hop on that bus. Do not get into that lift. You will, at that point, write an email to each of those interviewing officers on that panel. You're going to tell them each one an email. That's a different kind of email. Thank you for blah, 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 blah. Understand? Before you leave that parking lot, you will send out your thank yous at that point, okay? The reason why, only 38% of interviewees say thank you for the interview overall. Do not be part of that majority. Be the minority. Be that 38%. All right? I wish you guys luck. Take care. Subscribe and have a good night.